right. Uh, super excited to be here and get a chance to present the amazing work our team's been doing around Microsoft 365 Desired State configuration. Um, so quick intro, right? And by the way, I do have PowerPoint animation listed on my LinkedIn profile as a skill. Open source, uh, it's hosted on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash Microsoft, Microsoft 365 DSC, DSC stands for Desired State Configuration which is something that is part of PowerShell since PowerShell version four, which was released back in 2015. And essentially what it allows you to do is represent your entire tenants configuration as code to be able to enable DevOps scenarios, be able to uh, do some control, uh, automate change management processes as well. Right, the, uh, the module has been available, uh, now supports PowerShell 5.1 and above. So you can use PowerShell 7. This is something we introduced recently. So we have support for that. So if you want to run the tool inside of a Windows container, a nano server, or a core uh, server, you can do it. The tool leverages the PowerShell draft SDK under the cover, as well as other modules, um, such as the we're using the PNP a PowerShell for everything that's SharePoint related. We're using the Exchange Online Management shell under the cover. So there's a couple of dependencies that we are leveraging. And on top of this, the, um, the module is available. The way we're distributing it is through the PowerShell gallery. So within a single command, you can run install module Microsoft 365 DSC, and that will go and that will download all the components of the module, including all the dependencies, all the Microsoft draft modules that you need, all the other workloads, um, PowerShell modules as well. Okay. So what is desired state configuration? As I mentioned, it's been released around 2014. I think it's more around 2015, but essentially what it allows you to do is represent your configuration as a definition in a certain way, right? So for example, if you want to say, all right, I want to create a new team's calling policy that will prevent anonymous users from starting a meeting. Well, that will translate to something like this here, where you actually, and it looks very familiar, uh, it looks almost like JSON format to some users, right? But this is the DSC format that PowerShell uh, desired state uh, configuration out of the box uses. And essentially what we do is we have a Teams meeting policy block and in there we define what properties and how we wanna have them configured. So when you run this, it will go and it will analyze your tenant and check to see, all right, is there a Teams meeting policy name, demo meeting policy that already exists? If there is none, it will go and it will create it. If there is one, it will go and check to make sure that all the settings are configured in that desired state, as mentioned by the configuration. And if it doesn't, then it will go and it will automatically uh, update those parameters. You can also control components that should not be in your tenant, right? So for example, if you wanna make sure that you never have a Teams meeting policy named demo meeting policy, you can specify that you want it to be ensure absent, which will make sure that it will never get deployed to your environment. Okay. So what does Microsoft 365 DSC allow you to do? Well, we focus around six main pillars. The first one is the automation piece. That one's fairly easy, right? So it allows you to write a definition for your tenant for all workloads within a single configuration. So let's take an example here. So my first demo here, what I'm defining is I'm defining an Azure AD application that is gonna be called Nick Demo App that will define two permissions, user.read, which is a Microsoft Draft delegated permissions. And the second one is gonna be channel.create, which is an app only Microsoft Draft permission. Second thing I'm defining is a custom Teams calling policy that will be named Nick calling policy with all those settings in. And so what I'll do is I'll start the process. I'm just gonna go and launch um, my demo one. That's gonna take a few minutes uh, to run. In the meantime, what I wanna do is I quickly wanna do an overview of the environment, right? I'm a big believer in doing demos without smoke and mirrors, so I've got nothing up my sleeves. This is my demo environment right now. You can see I only have one Azure AD app registration. If you go to calling policies, I'm just gonna refresh this here real quick. You can see that I don't have the Nick demo calling policy, right? So this is currently my PowerShell script running that will go and create those components. If you want to get more information as to what resources are supported by Microsoft 365 DSC, you can go to the GitHub repo. Under the wiki section, we have resources lists and example. And in there, we have a full list of all the components that we support. Okay. So there's about 140 different macro components last time I checked. We support SharePoint, we have team support, we have security and compliance in tune, OneDrive, Planner, O365, the licensing part, Exchange Online, Azure AD. Now, 
one of the challenges that we have, right, is always how do we keep up with the constant changes in Microsoft 365? And two weeks ago, is it two weeks already? But anyway, we had the global hackathon in Microsoft. And our amazing team of MVPs and Microsoft engineers worked on a dynamic resource generator. What that allows us to do moving forward is that we can actually leverage the Microsoft Graph Open API definition and automatically wrap those endpoints into DSC resources, right? So instead of us always trying to play catch up and create new resources as new features become available, the discussion is now shift to if it's on the graph, we'll have DSC support for it, right? Um, to a certain extent, there's a caveat there, right? Like we don't want to play in what we call the data plane, right? We don't want to go and have DSC maintain like SharePoint lists, for example. It's mostly focused on configuration, but you get the point. And then if you go in and, for example, go to Azure AD from that list, you're going to see the list of all the properties that we have, along with a description of what they're for. And we also provide information about, all right, so what permissions do you need to be able to go and export those or automate the deployment? Some examples. So all the documentation is on there. We also have an amazing team of MVPs from the community that are working on revamping our entire documentation, creating GitHub pages. So that should be released um, within the next few weeks. So let's have a look. This is still running, but if I go and refresh this here, um, should be done anytime now. Any questions in the meantime while this is running? I see one. Can we do an export of configuration? Absolutely. Absolutely, and this is one of the pillars that I'm going to be talking about in just a few seconds. Um, so this idea of being able to do a snapshot of your current configuration. So PowerShell doesn't seem to be um, eager to run today. Uh, in the meantime, any other questions? Sorry, I just want to make sure we actually get this here. Is DC how they set up the pre-configured? Uh, there is a part of it that's being done with the, the pre-configured demos, right? Um, most of it is done through PowerShell script, so they're not directly leveraging PowerShell desired state configuration. Last time I checked, right? So, but that might have changed. Also, let's actually move on to the next thing while this is still running. One other thing that we allow you to do is take a snapshot of your configuration, right? As it was just mentioned. And how you can do it is the moment you go in and install your PowerShell module, the Microsoft 365 desired state configuration, you have access to a uh, command called export M365 desired state configuration. Right? And with that, we provide a graphical user interface that our colleague Sebastian uh, Levaya, who you've just heard from, built, which allows you to go and pick and choose the components you want to go and export from your current configuration. So that will actually launch the um, export tool, which is listing all the resources that we have. From here, you can go in, you can say, right, you know what, I want to unselect them all and I want to be very picky about the ones I want. I want to grab the Azure AD application. I want to go and grab the Exchange Online Organization settings, right? So you pick and choose. You essentially build your shopping cart. And then when you click on Generate, what it's going to tell you is going to give you the equivalent command that you would have to run to be able to export that configuration. So in my case, you see that every component I selected are listed here. Copy that to the clipboard, run it in your PowerShell console, and that will go and automatically export the configuration into a D DSC file. So you don't have to go and, and write it from scratch. You can go and start with an existing tenant take a snapshot of those configs and then tweak it. Or also the other thing that we support is the ability to go and clone configurations, right? A lot of customers I'm talking to, what they're saying is, look, we, we want to have a dev tenant, right? That is as close as possible to production. So what they're doing is they're taking a snapshot of configuration from prod, extracting that, taking that file and applying it onto a dev tenant, effectively cloning the configuration across two tenants. Okay. Where are we at? Uh, PowerShell. All right, so PowerShell is done. So if I go back here, refresh that, I can see my Nick demo app has been created. Let's have a look here. Take a look at the API permissions. We were supposed to have two of them. Perfect channel, create application, user read, delegated. So that one is created. Second one was the team's calling policy. Let's see if that worked. Let's refresh. Actually. Sorry about this. So I should now see my policy in there. Now, because we're leveraging desired state configuration under the cover, not only do we allow you to go and automate the deployment, so this is my policy, by the way, right? But desired state does two things. 
It allows you to bring an environment in the desired state, but it also ensures that that environment stays in the, the, the desired state. So what it does, it, it has a job that we'll call it continuous monitoring for the purpose of this, but it's actually leveraging something called a local configuration manager. And that will do frequent checks. So it will go and analyze your tenant to make sure it is still in the desired state. So let's create a drift. Okay, so I defined that this is the um, the settings I want. I'm going to save this. So we all agree that I'm now creating. So there's a discrepancy between the current configuration and the desired configuration. So every 20 or 15 minutes by default, DSC is going to go in and behind the, the scene is going to run a, a method called test DSC configuration. Okay, so that what it will do is it will wake up the engine, it will go and analyze the tenant, and it will report on any um, discrepancies that it detected. So let me just go and quickly run this. Perfect. So again, it's going to take a few minutes, but what it's doing now is connecting to my remote tenant, getting information about what the current state is, and comparing it with what the desired state should be based on the configuration I sent, and it's going to report on the discrepancies. Now, I can do many things, right, with that. By default, the DSC engine is configured so that it will do what we call apply and monitor. So if it detects a configuration drift here, the only thing it will do is log an event in Event Viewer to let me know it detected the drift. But you can also configure it for apply and autocorrect. So apply and autocorrect, the name says it, what it will do is it will go and if it detects a drift, it will automatically fix the drift. So reapply the desired configuration effectively. Now, the beauty about M365 DSC is that you can slice and dice it, right? You can say, you know what, SharePoint, like the SharePoint Teams, right, which is one of the things we support. If there's a drift, well, uh, report it, right? I want to be in control. I want to be aware that there's a drift, but don't go crazy and try to go and fix it. However, security and compliance, that is mission critical. So if you detect a drift in there, automatically fix it and send me an email to let me know that you've detected and uh, fixed the drift. Right, so you can pick and choose what components get what treatment, essentially. 15 minutes is the minimum. Uh, you can go up to once every 30 days as well. I'll be very honest, every 15 minutes is a bit overkill. Um, normally what I recommend customers is to go and do it twice a day. So every 12 hours, right? Like 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Um, again, sorry about this. It's gonna take a few minutes to complete. Let's quickly go back to the slide deck. Um, so this is the uh, export and synchronize, right? So as I mentioned, the idea is that you can just take a snapshot out of one tenant and then reapply it over the other. Uh, let's talk about the assessment piece. So that there are different assessments that we support um, as part of the, the, um, the Microsoft 365 DSC assessment piece. Steve, I see your question about sending an email. If you're using something like Azure DevOps, to have schedule release pipeline that will do the check. If it detects a drift, it can send an email with all the information pertaining to the drift. Yeah. The assessment piece. Okay, so essentially there are different types of assessments we can do. We can compare the configuration of two tenants. So the idea is that you have tenant A, tenant B. So let's say, let's say you're doing a merger, right? You want to figure out, all right, so what's different between the two tenants? Do an export of both, and then through the uh, the assessment engine that we provide, what we will do is we will analyze both config, figure out what the drifts are, the, the discrepancies between the two, and we'll generate what we call a delta report. Okay, the delta report will look something like something like this here, right? So we will tell you, all right, so in the source you have this setting here set to three, uh, this setting is set to 99 in the destination. Let me just do a quick live demo of this. The command that we have, by the way, is super easy. It's one command called new M365. Let me just remove that here. So it's new M365 DSC Delta report. You pass in the source PS1. So in my case, it's going to be my prod environment. My destination is going to be my dev. And where do you want to store the resulting uh, HTML? So let me do this here. Let's do number three. It's actually demo four. Um, and then what it will do is it will do two things. So under the cover, we have a tool called DSC parser. So it will take both configurations and it will convert them into PowerShell objects. And then what you can do with this is you can actually run the compare and it will generate the HTML report out of this. Okay. 
email. So yesterday, yeah, you, you can actually, you know what, if you want, you can plug it to a web hook, right? So if you detect a drift, you can actually just have a notification sent to a certain web hook that will automatically, I don't know, open a support ticket in your system or whatever, right? You decide how you want to treat that. Um, so we'll, sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth between things, right? So we'll let the assessment run. In the meantime, this is the, the test result. So remember, I was actually running a test and it's coming back and it's saying you have a discrepancy. The my calling policy here is not in the desired state. We know we created that drift, right? Out of the box, this is what PowerShell desired state configuration would tell you. Now with Microsoft 365 DSC, we provide you with more insights as to what went wrong. So not only are we telling you that the macro component is the team's calling policy, but we're also telling you that the allow delegation is the problem. Its current value is set to false and it should have been set to true, right? And here's a list of all the desired values, okay? So you can pinpoint exactly where the issue is. Now, the one thing we don't let you uh, figure out is exactly at what time, right? So this is the time at which the drift was detected, 1031. But because I'm running it every 15 minutes, maybe it happened at 1020. The other thing we're looking at doing is do cross-reference with the audit log. So not only are you able to, and I don't want to call this the finger pointing feature, but right, I mean, there's a drift that got created at 1020 and Bob is the one that made the change, for example, right? So be able to go and follow up, pick up the phone and ask Bob what happened there, right? Like, why is there a drift? Um, so that's the, the test piece. And then this is the report. I, whoop, 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 whoop. Sorry about this. Uh, okay, so the, the report is still being generated. Um, the drift configuration, we've talked about this, right? This idea of being able to do continuous monitoring. And then the last piece is something I call, um, I keep joking that it's called the, the putting lipstick on a pig uh, feature, but essentially all it does is it takes your configuration and it will convert it into a either an HTML or an Excel report. So this is what the report will look like if you were to export it to Excel. Excel makes a little more sense than um, HTML in my opinion, because then you can do fancy pie charts if you want to, you can actually do uh, filtering, you can do sorting and so on, but this is what it will give you. So we'll take that PowerShell configuration and automatically generate an Excel uh, out of this. Um, where are we at? Sorry, the, I just want to make sure that the last demo completes. I know I'm probably running out of time. So right now what it's doing is scanning my production environment. It figured out that I have 383 components that were defined. It's going to do the same thing with the test, the dev one, and then figure out what the discrepancies are and hopefully uh, generate my HTML report. So let's go to questions. What about changing desired state to match the current? Um, update to DSC to match right? ongoing changes. Uh, Jim, can you just elaborate a bit more on this? If, if you don't mind, I'm just trying to make sense of your question. So this is the report here. You can see that in my source, there is an exchange malware filter policy missing that exists in dev, but not in prod. Uh, the opposite also, and then what values are different between the two. Uh, yeah, if you can just add more details, sorry, in the chat. The other thing as well that I, I want you to understand is a lot of customers, what they're doing is they just want to be in control, right? They don't want to go and automate the entire change process, but they want to just be able to report on configuration drift. And the interesting scenario for those scenario, those customers is they're using the tool to get a full snapshot of everything. So essentially they're asking the questions to the tenant, tell me how you're currently configured. They take that configuration and they push it right back on the tenant and say, by the way, your current configuration has now become your desired configuration and from now on, any drift, you need to report back. Right? So you're not making any changes. You're taking a snapshot and setting that as the active config and anything that changes in what's defined there, you get control over. You get report, you get an email, you get a text notification, however you want to do it. Okay, um, okay that's it. So, okay, so what about changing the desired state to match the current? Well, okay, okay so that, that, that answered your question. Okay, perfect, cool. Um, I think I'm out of time. So any questions I missed? Sorry about yeah, that. We can, we, we can have you uh, cover the questions in the chat there, Nick. They can feel free to keep asking everybody. You've blown everyone's mind here. Uh, just amazing comments in the chat. So super amazing stuff. Thank you. Good. All, All right. right. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Nick.